This is part 2 of JavaScript with ASP.NET tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to display JavaScript confirmation dialog box when we attempt to delete a grid view data row. Let's understand this with an example. If we have a grid view like this, and when we click this delete link button, we want to display a JavaScript confirmation dialog box. Are you sure to delete? If we click OK, that's when we want the page to be posted back to the server and the respective data row should be deleted. If we click Cancel, nothing should happen. The data row should not be deleted. So let's see how to associate JavaScript with the client-side click event of this Delete Link button that is present inside this grid view control. So the first step here is to create the required database table. So let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. I've already created this employees table and this table is present inside sample DB database and here is the data that we have within this table at the moment, five rows. And here we have the script to create sample DB database, employees table, and script to populate employees table with test data. So I'll have this entire SQL script available on my blog in case you need it. Now let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have an empty ASP.NET web application project. Onto this web form, let's drag and drop a grid view control. Let's auto format this grid view. Let's drag and drop a SQL data source control as well. And let's configure the SQL data source control. Click New Connection. I'm going to work with a SQL server that's installed on my local machine. So I'm going to specify server name as local. We're going to use Windows Authentication. And from this drop-down list, select the database name. So the database that we want to work with is sample DB. And then click Test Connection. Test Connection succeeded. Click OK click OK again and click Next. And it's asking us if we want to save the connection string with this name in our web.config file. Let's leave that default there and click Next. And here we can select the columns that we want from employees table. Let's select all the three columns, ID, name, and gender. And then click on this Advanced button. Make sure you select this checkbox, Generate and Set Update and Delete Statements. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to delete data from this grid view control and then click OK and click Next. Finally, click Finish. Now let's associate this SQL Data Source Control with this Grid View Control. So from the Grid View Tasks pane, from this drop-down list, choose Data Source, select SQL Data Source 1. Now look at this. We, we get all the three columns, ID, name, and gender from Employees table, and we want to enable deleting within the Grid View Control. So select this checkbox, Enable Deleting. Look at that, it displays the Delete Link button. Now, let's flip this web form to the source mode. Notice that within the grid view control, including the Delete column, we have got four columns. So when we flip this to the source mode, inside grid view control, we have got a section for columns. And inside columns, we have got four columns. And the first column is actually Command Field. And look at this attribute show delete button equals true. So this column is the one which actually displays that delete link button. Now using the command field, we cannot associate JavaScript declaratively because command field does not have on client click attribute. So if you want to associate JavaScript to the delete link button declaratively, then you will have to convert this command field into a template field. So let's see how to convert the command field into a template field. So let's flip this web form to the design mode. And then from the grid view tasks pane, click on this edit columns link. And from this section selected fields, select delete field. And then click on this link which says convert this field into a template field and then click OK. So this should have converted that command field into a template field. So let's flip this page to the source mode. And now, within the grid view section, within the columns, notice that the first column is a template field. And inside the template field, we have an item template. And inside that, we have a link button. And remember, link button has got on client click attribute. So on client click, so using this attribute, we can specify the JavaScript that we want to execute in response to the uh, client click event of this link button. So return, confirm, and to this function, let's pass the message that we want to display within the confirmation dialog box. Are you sure? 
to delete. Alright, so with this change, let's go ahead and run the page. Look at that, we get all the data when we click on this delete link button. We get a confirmation dialog box. Are you sure to delete? When we click cancel, notice that nothing happens. On the other hand, when we click OK, the respective data row is deleted. Row number 3 is gone. At the moment, we only have 4 rows. Let's quickly confirm this. So when we execute the select query, notice that row 3 is gone and we have just 4 rows. So we have seen how to associate JavaScript declaratively in the HTML. Now let's see how to do the same thing programmatically using the server-side code. So the first thing to do is to get rid of this onClientClick attribute. And we are going to make use of row data bound event. So how to generate row data bound event handler? Go to the properties of the grid view control and then click on this events icon. And on this page you can actually see all the events that grid view supports. And here we should have row data bound events. So let's double click on that. The respective event handler should be generated. So this event will be fired every time a data row is bound to the grid view control. Okay, This event will be fired even for the header row. So the first thing that we need to do is check if the row is a header row or data row. Because within the header row, we don't have delete link button. Okay, So if we're going to make use of this object that's coming into this event handler method, grid view row event arguments. So if e dot row dot row type equals data row, then what we want to do is retrieve this link button and then add JavaScript to that link button. So we want to do that for every data row. Okay, So if the row is data row, then e dot row dot find control. So this delete button is actually a li link button. And if you look at that link button on this web form, the ID of the link button is link button 1. So we can use that ID to find that link button in every row. So basically in the code, what we are saying is e.row.findControl. And to this find control method, we need to specify the ID of the server-side control. And the ID is link button 1. And if you look at this find control method, it is returning the link button as a control back. But we know that it's going to return as a link button. So let's typecast that to be of type link button. Let's create a variable of type link button. And then assign that link button to that variable. Now all that is left is link button dot attributes dot add. The key is going to be on click. And then we specify the JavaScript that we want to execute in response to the client click event. So return confirm. Are you sure to delete? So let's go ahead and run this. So now when we click delete, we should again get the confirmation, are you sure to delete? Click cancel, nothing happens. When we click OK, the respective row should be deleted. Now let's see how to include the ID of the record that is being deleted in the confirmation message. So for example, if we click on row 1, delete button, for example, then we want a confirmation dialog box like this are you sure to delete record with ID is equal to 1? So we want to include the ID of the record that is being deleted within the confirmation message as well. Okay, So let's see how to do that. So here is the message written uh, confirm. I mean, this is the JavaScript that we want to execute. So here is the message, are you sure to delete? So to that, we want to append are you sure to delete record with ID equals whatever is the ID. So we now need to retrieve the ID value and then append that to this string that is passed to the confirm um, JavaScript function. 
And to get the ID, we are going to make use of data binder class. So data binder dot eval. And you know, keep in mind this code, I mean this event will be fired for each data row. So when it is fired for the first data row, we need to retrieve the ID column value and then pass it to this confirm function. So to this eval method, the first one is the container of that row. The container is e dot row dot data item. And then the second one is the column within that data row which contains the ID value. The column name is ID. So this method is going to return the ID value of every row. So let's save these changes. Let's run this one more time. Now let's click on the delete button of row 2. Look at that. Are you sure to delete record with ID equals 2? Click cancel, nothing happens. Click OK, the row gets deleted. If I click on row 5, are you sure to delete record with ID equals 5? Thank you for listening and have a great day.